Who's the Commander Who Go Podcast, episode 465. I'm Brando, I'm here with Brian, and we're going to talk about the legends from Magic Foundations Horizons. Now, hit our theme song! Hey, Ryan, we're back for yet another whirlwind adventure. How you doing? We're back. Good. What is going down? A whole ton is going down. We're going to get into some legendary creature that we want to meet at the beach for a drink, probably. Yeah, and there are some beach-inspired arts that we're going to talk about. Yeah, of yeah. course we are. And we got some stories to tell some people to thank before we get into all of that stuff. But before we get to any of that stuff, we have to thank our official business daddies, FusionGamingOnline.com. They are your source for all your gaming needs and also... The great Pile of Bones Brewing Co. They're the second coolest thing to come out of Regina, as well as the official beer sponsor for CCO's Sidewalk Slam, right here on YouTube. I like how that becomes more New York cartoon like impersonation yeah. from. I'm walking, <laughs> I'm walking here. I'm going to the sidewalk. You wait until I get a, a toothpick and I put it up and I go, hey, yo, and then we do the yeah, thing, right? Yeah. Nothing has yeah. New York. That's Miami, but. But, you know, I can go wherever I want. I'm a well-traveled Canadian person. That's it. Okay, yeah, for sure. Big thank you to FusionGamingOnline.com. If you're looking for a discount on all of your gaming supplies, you use, hey, get this. Oh, tell me. New promo code. Uh-oh. It's that time of year, new promo code, CCO Holiday. It's going to get you a discount on literally anything you buy from Fusion. Business Daddy's definitely heard last week when we said we're going to ride summer until we couldn't anymore and said, boy, we're going to put a stop to that nonsense immediately. That was the joke, (laughs) yeah, because Summer came here right after we recorded the show and she's like, you guys were talking about me? And we're like, do not watch the show. Yeah, no, you don't want to know. CCO Holiday is going to get you a discount. Magic cards, sealed products, singles, sleeves, play mats, D&D books, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, you know, for the Christmas presents for the kids and And stuff. That's right. Um, and doing so using the code is going to support CCO and let the business daddies know that their partnership with the goons from Saskatoon, the goons from Saskatoon, huh? Yeah. Ah, it's a good one. It is. Yeah. Or so, else. Yeah. It'd be a real shame if they didn't think it was a good deal for them there. It'd uh-huh. be a real shame if some goons showed up and took a big crap outside the front door there. Oh, I, I thought somebody was going to fall down and it wasn't going to be an accident. Oh no. Cause like I figured we got to do something that. Like would happen anyway, but then we get to laugh about it because we did it, and they'll never know. Mm, yeah, I thought it, I, I thought it was going to be somebody uh, with a black eye had to tell somebody it was a doorknob. Well, it might have been a doorknob, but just in a sock and not attached <laughs> to a door. <laughs> you know? Yes. You know. Yeah. Final big thank you goes out to. Uh, oh no. Pile of Bones. Yeah. I got to mention the, 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 oh man, everybody from Pile of Bones coming up clutch when it counts. Talked yeah. about it on the pre show yesterday. We've got uh, Pile of Bones coming. It, it's being delivered during trash ante. So I'm going to have to fight off a bunch of nerds that are like charity, <laughs> charity nerds, because it's coming to the CCO experience Calgary as a thank you to all of the people in the nation that make uh, the CCO experience is so much fun. Yeah. We've got some pile of bones coming. So thanks to them. Now the final thank you goes to producer Gary at the Dufferin Avenue media network network studio. Yes, we're That's, in the studio uh, right now. Where we are, yeah, yeah, for sure. And we have a, a fun little thing to show off. Oh, look at CCO Summer. I forgot to change it. Oh, no. no. Oh, that's it. Cut, cut. No, it's got, <laughs> cut the uh, cut the show. Show's over. No, wait. You Is know that if intro you're watching was... on YouTube. Which it should be. Yeah. Man, that show was, that, that intro was really good. I don't want to waste it. it. Let's just power through. Yeah, we're power through, baby. Through. I was going to say, you're, you'll see something really cool that we're going to have in Calgary if producer Gary wants to flip over to uh, I I believe yeah. it's camera 2 now I It's camera 4 but that's all you're going to do for build up this is a big moment Just show it Just show it it's the CCO Plinko board it's the yeah. funnest thing ever we're going to have a whole Plinko tournament in Calgary Yeah. and producer Gary's coming out in his house coat and underwear and he's going to drop a team Brando Come That's on. right see that's how it is oh, That's why he didn't win drop a all team right. Ryan in there There we go Let's go! Oh, fuck, damn it. This is rigged and bullshit. (laughs) Go again. Damn it. Try again. I need more tokens. Ah, (laughs) shit. Okay, god damn it. The point is we're going to win regular cards, big cards, packs, stickers. There we go. This is the one. This is the one, baby. Damn it. We're blocking it out. We're blocking it out. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) 
<laughs> so we're, we've got the Plinko board. As it says, every play is going to be a winning play. We've got uh, prize tickets to give out. Yeah. Booster packs, courtesy of Face to Face Games, our friends there. And uh, maybe we'll touch base with the other retailers like Fusion and House of Cards and whoever else is there to yeah. say, hey, anybody want in on the Plinko board? Ooh, maybe Sock Rocket would give away socks. Oh, oh 100% they will. That'd be fun. 100% they will. Sock, uh, Sock Rocket, those guys are good. And I always, love those guys. Always willing to discuss and theorize new sock ideas. I just want the one with guns on them. So the Glock socks? The Glock socks. I, That's all I want. I want I want socks with a Glockenspiel on it so they could be sock and spiels. Duh. Yes. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Yeah. I'd also accept ones with frogs on them. There's no pun there. I just want socks with frogs on them. Yes. Socks with frogs. Songs yes, with frogs. Am, yeah, maybe they'd help you jump higher. It's already over. Yeah, it's so already they, over. So they'll be in for sure. And on Sunday, if you're coming to the CCO experience, if you're coming to uh, um, face to face tour championship weekend, Calgary, it's still yeah. a mouthful every time. Yes, it is. Um, That's why I never Sunday, say Sunday, we are going to have a Plinko tournament. We're going to win a big card, big giant card. card up for grabs. I wonder what the big card's going to be. I hope it's one that you want, and then we have to give it to somebody else. Oh, yeah. That's okay. I like giving stuff away. Yeah, you do. I like giving stuff away, especially at events. And, of course, there's going to be small prizes throughout the week. We've got uh, Ultimate Guard as the title sponsor. They're going to have stuff to give away. Face to Face always has generously provided us yeah. with lots of stuff to give away. And, of course, CCO discounts to the merch booth, stickers, tokens, uh, games with uh, all of CCO Nation. And yeah, lots uh, of the dude bros coming. This is going to be a good call weekend. Them, everything. Can I call them the Greater Goons? Can I call them the Goon Squad? The Greater Goons? Yeah. The Goons at Large? Yeah. All of those are fine terms. Mm -hmm. I think. We're the Goondock oh, I like that. <laughs> yes, the CCO Goondock Saints. No, we're yep. out there clapping up people that are doing bad. Oh, like yeah. I'm going to clap some cheeks in frickin' Plinko. <laughs> man hey, i'm undefeated man as you have seen just yeah, shut up yeah let's just talk you, about cards seen. ryan um uh, last thing That's last thing go again gary you want another one no i'm undefeated okay. doesn't matter I'm just going to prove. <laughs> yeah post calgary is going to be coming up to like Black Friday time yep. and then the Christmas kind of theme. I want to have a whole bunch of stuff on sale because Brando and I were talking about getting rid of the old merch yeah. to bring in all of the new CCO merch for 2025. And we're we're really digging the comic book theme yeah. and, and that kind of old school, like 60s retro comic vibe. So I, I got a call out for the nation. Okay. If you want to see that kind of merch, let us know what you want. Because I don't want to guess and make st something that nobody wants, right? Yep. And also, if you're maybe an artist or uh, some kind of graphic designer or have some ideas of what would be cool that uh, maybe you'd like to see on some CCO merch, you get us, uh, hit, hook us up, hit us up. Yeah. Because yeah. I would love to feature artists out in the community like we've done so often with Gee Pizza. We use those yeah. skeleton heads on freaking everything. As you can have seen with the Planko board and the Planko tokens, and I guess not my shirt, but yeah. there it is again on, this, on the But they're on, they're on the CCO Experience Calgary shirt with cowboy hats on. Fucking it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? And... Uh, uh, they, they've a little bit become synonymous with our brand in Canada because face-to-face -face games also puts them on all of the stuff. Yeah. Like when we did the party in, in Toronto and now going to Calgary on the website and stuff. So We're doing this. Yep, for sure. So lots of good deals to be had at the CCO store coming up. And of course, if you want to get in the Discord and help us plan and get into the CCO design channel and stuff, yeah. patreon.com slash CCO podcast. That's where to do it. A little support goes a long way. We appreciate all of it. Very much so. And you can get on Curbside Pickup. The latest one just launched a four-player game, Callum the Third. He was in it, uh -huh. and he's going to be in Calgary. That's going to be fun. Yeah, he's coming off his celebrity appearance on Curbside Pickup. we got to uh -huh. knock him down a few pegs. Will do. I'm going to use Plinko to do that and Magic the Gathering cards. Oh, and wow. I can probably drink more beer than him, but well, nobody's I was just going to hit him. Oh, yeah, the old sock and the doorknob trick yeah, exactly. uh, from a few minutes ago. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. somebody's going to get a black eye. It's going to be Callum. Yeah. From a doorknob. Yeah, I guess we ruined the surprise. Spoiler alert. But here we are. Spoiler alert. Yeah, the CCO initiation party. Everybody's <laughs> going to get hit with a sock with a doorknob in it. Yeah. yeah. Now it's a cue ball. Yeah, it's fine. We, we all remember the kids. It's fine. Yeah. Should we talk about some cards? Yeah. Okay. So we have got 39 new legends from Foundations and Jumpstart. Oh, man. Combined. And that seems oh, like lots, but... 
We're not going to talk about all of them. No. Uh, yeah, yeah. Good thing for editor Joe. Yes, because some <laughs> of them are not, not. I don't think any of them are actually like duds, but some of them are just. I don't care. Some of the uncommon ones aren't very powerful, yeah. or very obviously are like, oh, that goes in the ninety-nine of something, like yeah. the like the elf that untaps all of your other elves. Yeah, like, right. That goes in the ninety-nine of your Lathril elf ball deck. That, like, yeah. That's the whole review. Yeah, we did it. Oh, there, man, there it bonus is. Bonus card, right? <laughs> bonus card review. Now, some of these things. And a little bit, we'll talk about it more next week when we when we do our final look at foundations. Yes. We're a little bit behind the eight ball, sorry everybody. Are quite expensive. Yes, and I so tell t tell us a little bit about that. Okay, the reason for this is it's still technically pre-release as of this episode's release. It's mm -hmm. actually this coming weekend that's the official release day, and you can go out and buy the product and all that stuff. But prices are still going to be very high for the next little while until the packs and jumpstart get sorted out mm -hmm. we talked about on the pre-show yesterday Bruvac maintained a fairly high level of price 30 but, bucks i'd say but did come down from where it was when, yep. when it was originally released i think it was 80 or 90 at the time oh yeah it was quite expensive now uh muxus on yeah, the other hand Mux. 50 dollars at release now four dollar card uh, six dollar card huge nosedive and 90 percent of the cards in here i'm going to argue here will take a huge dive so by all means, by Jumpstart, there's tons of cool stuff in there. There's bobs, and we're going to get into that yeah. next week. Uh, uh, uh. Tons of cool stuff. But if you're going to pre-order this stuff, be be aware that you're going to pay a premium to get your shit now. Yes. When you could wait a few months or weeks even and get them for much, much less. And we don't usually do the finance thing here, but I'd hate to see you get taken because you actually think that the Jelly Drover is actually worth 80 United States freedom dollars. Yeah, that and that's an uncommon. Now, one of the I got two things to say about that. One of the reasons that these are expensive and may maintain a slightly elevated price is because they do have Japanese manga anime artists. Maybe. And and in some cases famous artists that people will have heard of yeah. and want to collect art by those individuals. And that's fantastic. I love when they do that. Look at the uh, the Liliana from the Japanese Liliana from War of the Spark is like three thousand dollars in foil because it's done by the Final Fantasy guy. Yep. Right. And how many Final Fantasy guy arts are there going to be in the Final Fantasy set? Oh, I don't know. I'd imagine quite a few. S several. Yeah. Several or none. I don't know if you're being facetious. <laughs> no, there'll be lots. I'd imagine they're. <laughs> how many are going to be done by AI? Ooh. Yeah. Oh, shit. The other thing I'll say about the elevated price of these cards in particular, because we're talking about them. If you want them and you have the means without putting yourself kind of in a hole, please go out and spend $70 on a single at an elevated price to help out your LGSs. That's the thing. That's fantastic. And I don't think that that gets enough credence in content. If you have the means and it doesn't, spending $70 on a pre-release magic card that's going to be worth $15 in a month, if $70 doesn't hurt you, Go out and spend $70 at your LGS. Go to Fusion. Go to any online retailer that is not like the biggest four in the world that are like multi-million dollar corporations. Go out and spend money because that's somebody's business. And that makes a lot of sense for the health of the game yeah. and the health of those LGSs, right? Because if there isn't $70 cards in packs and they're forced to sell cards at two and three dollars yeah ah they kind of get boned right yeah. so this is a good thing for them and uh it's a double good thing for your friends at cco if you use cco <laughs> holiday i uh, get a little bit of a discount on the what's her name sinette jelly drover sinette jelly we're not even let's just talk let's give just, her a read she'll be the bonus one so she's a two two for blue four when she comes into play or eats shit you get a one one blue jellyfish creature token with flying creatures you control with flying get plus one plus one she is a she is a fine card. I'm gonna play blue bounce, blue blink. Not nah, not. Nah, I'm gonna have to die. No, but also when she enters. Oh yeah. So if I can blink her, she's gonna re-enter and she's Get gonna those. give me a jellyfish. And the jellyfish is actually a two two. So she, when you said she's a two two for four, and I'm like, okay. Uh, you okay, four but, power but actually two she's two. a two two for she she's four power for four mana and uh, two of which is flying. Like, this is a great limited card. If I opened this Jumpstart pack, A, I'm probably going to win that game. Yeah. B, next weekend, I'm going straight to the freaking retail booth <laughs> to trade it in. <laughs> <laughs> Thereby driving the price down for the people who can't afford the $70 price tag. Kaboom. I bet you they either won't be taking Jumpstart cards on the weekend of, or Sinet will be 
like a, a three dollar buy list. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's go to the actual things. Uh, well, this this is them. No, that's not them. Nope. This is them. This okay. Is here them. we go. Yes. Okay. Who do you want to talk about? My first one. Sure. This is it's right here. It's Ophelia Viper Whisperer. Okay. The one three for black one. Death touch. Whenever Ophelia attacks, you may pay Golgari hybrid and one. If you do, you mech black snack, mm. which is one of my favorite things to say in all of magic. Do you have a Golgari deck? I do. And do you? why I'm so excited about this is my Golgari deck is... Oh, have a Hapatra, right? Well, I have a Patra and I have Oops All Death Touch. Oh. And this goes right in there because it makes snakes with Death Touch. It, it could go in both? Both? <laughs> And she also has another ability, black five, until end of turn, whenever one or more Gorgons and or snakes we control. Deal combat damage to a player. That player loses half their life, round it up. Oh, I like half life and yeah, round it up. Baby. Yes, yes. So I'm actually thinking, if I can source one of these, and she's also got one of those anime waifu arts. Yep. I'm going to put her at the helm. And as we sit here recording right now, she's $40. Mm. I'm going to take her. And I'm going to remove the current head of my Oops All Death Touch deck. Who is, Which is? I, it's the Glissa that at the beginning of combat you pick a thing. I'm going to trash her immediately. Put this in. Take all the Phyrexians that I play in the deck out because I'm playing Glissa. I'm going to replace it with Ophelia and Gorgons. Gorgon, so you can have snakes and gorgons. Yeah. Which are really just snakes. <laughs> which is people with snakes on their hands. Yes, It's yes. going to be so good. And then I can mech snack, which is, again, one of my favorite things to say in Magic. It's almost as much fun as looking at the top card of my library at any time. I go mech snack, and everybody goes, what the hell is that? I want to make a snake. Ah, mech snack. and then they get it. Yep. And yep. Oh, okay, that's fun. Yep. And then other people say it, and it's a really good time. Yes. The point is, I like this card lots. I like the art on it. I like what it does. I'm hoping I can source one, but man, like, it's, I think that's actually going to make my Oops All Death Touch deck a little bit more synergistic than before when it was a Karth the Lion Planeswalker theme in there. And now it's like the Phyrexians from All Will Be One because I wanted to play Glissa. And now I'll actually have something that just does the Death Touch thing and gives me kind of an, a, a win condition on the back of my little dudes. Because most, most Death Touch guys, except for like Gitrog Monster, real small. Mm. I have a question for you. Okay. And... In in this very limited example of your Golgari Snake and Gorgon deck, yeah. the answer is no and you like it. But in the greater magic sphere, in the greater magic universe for Commander, does having hybrid mana symbols in the text box of legendary creatures, does that help or does that hurt the card? And is that good or bad for magic in general? I think it helps. It, it helps? I think if this was just a mono black card, I think it would be overshadowed fairly quickly. I think that the green in this particular case helps. And I think on a card that's either situational, mana intensive, maybe even difficult to play, adding that extra colored pip just makes the card a little better. Think Thelen of Havenwood, right? Yeah. He added the black in the text box so you can play like the one black fungus, but also just black cards. Yeah. If this was just black, you can get access to the green stuff, which is more death touch. And I think that that, that helps overall. But... In Jumpstart, you have it like this. You can play it in your mono black deck if you want. So I, I dig it. I dig it. Yeah, and, it, and, and if you open a, uh, a second pack that has green in it, you can still activate its ability with the green side of Jumpstart pack that you get. Correct. This is, this is the other side of it. And you put up all those great points. Yeah. The other side of it is if I have a deck already, Mm-hmm. Uh -huh that doesn't have green in it. Or maybe my maybe I'm like a real CCO hipster and I've got like a, a Demir blue and black snake deck. Or a or a Gorgon deck that's got blue and black in it. Sure. I don't know why anybody would have that. It's poor example in this exact case, but let's pretend that that's sure. the example. Now I can't play this. Right. Right? And right. do I switch to Damia, Sage of Stone, to do like Saltai <laughs> Gorgons now? Or do I change my Demir Gorgons deck, which is kind of maybe uh, a, a deck that is is predicated on my identity as like a fringe brewer to something that is the same thing as everybody else is going to print or, or build because they gave it to me right here. They said Gorgons and Snakes in this color combination, and this is what they want me to play, right? Uh, and and it, takes, it, it, yeah. it takes like a... It, it extracts the hipster out of what I'm trying to do. 
Or, hold on a second, or does it make the hipster build, Demir Gorgons, that much cooler now? Yeah. And, and thereby making it e even more of a positive because I'm, I'm distinctly going against the grain of what this wants me to do. That. Yes. I suppose that's the optimist's or the pessimist's view of it, right? It depends on how you look at it. Yeah, okay. Also, if you were building a mono black Oops All Death Touch, for example, you could still have this be the commander of that deck. You just don't have to play green. You, you could, could have yeah. not a single forest and not a single green creature in the whole deck, and you wouldn't even notice. Yeah, and you know what's funny about, about that is in two years from now, when 86 different sets have come out and there's been 10 more snakes printed with Death Touch in green and black. That's right. Right? You could say, I play a Felia Viper Whisperer, mono black. And, <laughs> and people would be like, what the fuck is that? What is the deck is that? I don't know what deck that is. Nobody would know what, what you're doing, right? You know what would be fun is to play her in mono, just do mono green with just some blacks that you can play her. Mm. That'd be good. Mm. That'd be good too. Who's your next thing person? I want to stop. I want to just touch on this one super fast. Just sure. Bruilos of Fairy's Band. Sure. Because it's a, it does Simic bullshit. It says Simic right on the card, mm -hmm. but it's just mono green. Power and toughness, each equal to the number of lands you control. Star, star for five. Mm -hmm. So it's five, five for five. Let's say that's fine. And then also, when it attacks, draw a card and then play a land. Why isn't that green and blue? It's, that's what Simic does. That's the Simic ability. I like that it doesn't have blue in it. It's just putting blue into green. Dogs and cats living together. Mass hysteria. Yes, very much so. <laughs> I do like that it doesn't have blue in it. So if you did want like power and toughness equal to number of lands, that's a very green thing. Yep. But if I want to also do the, the Tatiova thing, but have yeah. it a, a, attached to being aggressive sure. instead of trying to value and combo like Tatiova does, yep. I want my Tatiova to be aggressive, but because I take the trade-off in the big commander in the command zone, I don't get blue. I think that this card is actually kind of smart. It, it, it's cool, but I still would like to see blue in it. I wouldn't. Fuck it. Play tattoo over then, bitch. Can't. Good. Not big enough. Oh. Uh, yeah, too and small. And it's got blue in it. Too small, too combo-y. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, want to play big beats. Calm okay. beats. Speaking of big beats. Okay. I, I've got... I've got. Uh, finally got one here? got a couple on this line here. Okay. Alenda Saint of Dusk. I was wondering if you were going to like this. I'm not sure if I like it. It. I have an Alenda deck. One of you my long-standing decks and quite powerful, very resilient. I bring it to all the conventions I go to because it kind of plays at any power level. It's got combo. It's got big stuff. It's got big mana. And it's got lots of recursion and, and resilience in case I'm playing like control heavy meta, lots of wraths and stuff, right? Sure. This, not that at all. No. No. Not this even is a 4-4 four, four for 4. So already fine if you're sure. playing Foundations Limited like I've touched on... Multiple times. Wanting to do. Lifelink, Hexproof from Instance. Pretty good. Sure. Pretty freaking good. As long as your life total is higher than your starting life total, it gets plus one. So it's sure. a 5-5 five, five life linking pro instance. Yes. Ooh. Okay. Alenda gets an additional oh. plus five. It also gets menace if your life total is above your sure. starting life total. Sure. So it ain't getting blocked. Yes. It gets an additional plus five, plus five if your life total is 10 greater than your starting life total. Mm. Ooh, so then it becomes a 10-10, which is fine. Sure. I like it in the Orzov life gain deck. Sure. I don't think it's the de facto Orzov life gain deck because already Tesa double dies triggers or yes. whatever exists. Yeah, there's too many other things in that space that in, already exist. This is more aggressive than that. This is more aggressive. But it's not. And I, I think you harness and leverage life gain and you do that in Orzov primarily. But this deck is not the aristocrat deck, which I I really appreciate that we're not. And, and you've had the game where you sit down, totally coincidentally flip over your commanders Every, like, all four players playing Aristocrats? It was three Aristocrats decks and clones. So I was also playing Aristocrats. Right, and and this is very much not the Orzov Aristocrats deck, though it cares about life gain. Yes. Again, just a little bit of an interesting design on the commander, even though I already know what goes in, like Tree of Perdition and yeah. switching life totals. And the guy that says, switch your life total and his power... Right? From Dominaria. Sure. So I like that one. I like the next one. Evereth, Viceroy of Plunder. I thought I was going to like this one. And then I 
was fine on it and just moved along. Okay, well, I'll give it a read. It's got a little bit of a novel. It's Black 2 Vampire Soldier, relevant creature types, Flying 2-2. Two, two. Sacrifice another artifact or creature. Put a plus one, plus one counter on Everith. If the sacrifice permanent was a treasure, Everith gains lifelink until end of turn, activate only as a sorcery. When Everith dies, you could pay, here it is, mm -hmm. Rakdos Hybrid and one. When you do, Everith deals damage equal to its power to each opponent. That's like sort of fling. Sure. But you have to make it die somehow, which is fine. You're playing Rakdos. You just fucking... You just sack it to Just something. kill it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then it flings. It goes right alongside. We talked about uh, uh, Imskir Iron Beater. Remember? It yeah. It was kind of like the, the Rakdos fling deck. She could just go into that deck. Yes. Really? Or she could be the helm of that deck. And I love when that kind of thing happens because I could say, I'm going to play Everth today or I'm going to play Imskir today and have... Have a build, have your build situated in a way where the deck functions with either commander in the command zone. Sure. I think that that's cool because it lets you spice up your your deck arsenal without putting in like extra work once the deck is built. For people who have not 29 decks like Brando or yeah. 16 decks like me, you could have two decks kind of in one. Yes. And I think that that's a great way to keep the game affordable for yourself yep. and uh, give yourself kind of that unique gameplay experience by swappable legends. Yeah, I dig that. See, yeah. I had to, when I wanted to do that, I had to build Norin and Norin. So mm -hmm. now I have bad Norin and like new Norin. He does the same thing, just worse. Ah, that's okay. Yeah, but hey, now we can do it all in one deck. That have gives you, decks. that gives you a different experience though, because yep. you can play the deck at different power kind of ranges, right? Sure does. Super casual, or like something that's a little bit more controly, grindy, nigh staxy. Hey, yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. Are we gonna talk about this guy? Hell yeah, we yeah. are. Fumulus the Infestation is a legendary Ooh. creature, vampire, insect. Two, two for four. Those are all over the place. Mm -hmm. Flying Death Touch. So we already like that. Whenever a player sacrifices a non-token creature, we get a one-one black bug creature token with flying. I know it's insect, but I'm gonna say bug. You'll yep. know why in a second. Next line of text says, whenever a bug, leech, slug, or worm you control attacks, defending player loses a life, we gain a life. This card likes bug and slug. Bug and slug. And you know what makes bug and slug? Toxrail Tox makes bug <laughs> and slug, baby. So this is a 99 in Toxrail? Absolutely it Absolutely is. it is. I love it for being at the head of its own deck. For slug, like for slug. And not just bug, but like worms and all those weird creatures that you're that not... That never really had a, yeah. a home in, in a deck, right? Like this is the deck for that if that's what you want to do. Yes. And I like I like insect. I like leech. Get your uh, alabaster leeches. Get your androdite leeches or whatever from invasion. Those cards suck, but now they have a home. <laughs> and they're <laughs> white. Uh, what's the black one? There's one in every color. Uh, I don't remember. Obsidian leech? Probably. Jade leech? Which one is jade? Jade, jade is, is probably green. green. One, the green one, yeah, yeah. Anyways, it gives you a place for those cards that never really had a home. And sure, you could make an insect deck with, you know, your insect commander. Yeah, like with uh, Mazarek. Mazarek, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and sure, you get green in that spot. Yeah. Great. But. You're also playing Mazarek. I like this freaking guy. And yeah. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it. Okay. I like this guy in a stacks list. Yeah. Because I can just make my opponent's sacrifice creatures yeah i'm gonna play all the edicts i'm gonna play all the stuff that what? makes you sack your stuff and i'm gonna get i'm gonna break parody on the on the flesh bag marauders yeah there we go because i'm gonna get a guy that's left over from it you're gonna get four guys if you play a flesh bag marauder you're you gonna get, get four, four guys. guys yeah because it's whenever a player not even an opponent yeah. right so assuming everybody sacks a non-token creature you're gonna get four flyers for one shitty removal and spell. And what I like even more is a lot of edict effects, like Diabolic Edict, for example, from Tempest, is an instant. So yeah. I can do it on your turn, and then when I untap, my guy has virtual haste. Yeah. And then I can, because it flies, probably get in with impunity and make you lose life. Yes. Thereby lowering the life total. Or if I'm playing the black card draw that makes me lose life, I'm breaking or creating parity with my virtual haste bugs that bring your life total down to where mine is. Mm -hmm. I like this card lots for all of those reasons. Let's talk about the art for one moment. Sure. Looking at this picture, is he giant or are the little bugs just little? 
That's not what I thought you were going to ask me. No, no, the perspective there to me is because they're like way in the background. There's a cave, but like, is he really, really big? And then the other bugs are regular sized or is he a regular sized bug? And all those other bugs are just very small. I'm going to assume that he is a, a big, but not a giant. Uh, I think he's the size of a small dog. <laughs> well, I guess which would make him a giant bug. Well, that would be a giant. Well, I mean, not if you live in Australia. <laughs> Right? That's like a regular size bug. Shout in out Australia. to everybody in the nation who, yeah. who is in Australia. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if they have bugs that are that big. I wonder if you can ride bugs. Oh, yeah. you know what I didn't even realize? He's also a vampire. Yeah. Relevant creature type. Oh, man. I like this card even more now. Yeah. This is really good. And looking at, we, we downloaded the big art crop from uh, Scryfall. Yep. The, the way that it's done and the line work makes it look, I'm going to say, just like 1% cartoony. Yeah. Very old school, traditional fantasy, like from 20 years ago, 25, 30 years ago, magic art. Of the anime Which I arts really like. From Jumpstart, that one I keep forgetting is a Jumpstart card, actually. It looks too much like a magic card to me. Oh, and look at the bug token he makes. That's cool. No, that's from, that's from Ammon Kit. Oh. Oh, that's also cool. It's also good. It's still good, but 16 bucks. Give me a break. Okay. Everybody <laughs> shut up for a second because it's time. It's time to talk about the fucking man. I don't know if they're a man. I think it might be a little girl. But the point is, we're going to talk about General <laughs> Crete, the bolt bringer. That's this... what people say about you. Yes, all the time. I got mistaken by Woody at work, and he thought that he went into the ladies' bathroom because I was standing there washing my hands. <laughs> and he walked in, oh, sorry, and he left. <laughs> Come on, man. I'm very broad. I'm... <sighs> Very manly. Only where it counts. That's right. The point is, General Creek the Bolt Bringer, baby, is a 2-2 two, two for red, 2 goblin, yeah, soldier. Whenever one or more goblins we control attack, we get a 1-1 one, one red goblin creature that's tapped and attacking, which is amazing. And also, whenever another creature we control enters, deals one damage to each opponent. Each opponent. Each so opponent. that's Impact Tremors, it's right? Impact Tremors, that's a goblin that makes goblins this is my favorite one period and it's legendary so you could build a deck around it theoretically straight into norin do you think that when you open a jumpstart pack the pack the the indicator card on the front that tells you what deck you got says goblins it goddamn better <laughs> you bet you it does so i'll be extra excited because i'm gonna get extra goblin stuff yep yep and i just like the What's the, the implications of what that card does are obvious. We don't need to go super deep no, into what it no, does. No, no, no. But I like the picture. I like that it goes in my favorite deck. I like that it's going to go into some other decks if I can find a couple of them. I really, really, really like that card. I wish, and this, this is a minor gripe, and I might be the only one, but I bet you I'm not. I wish that they did have the Jumpstart Legends in normal art in Foundations the set. Me too. Instead of... Just the uh, the anime versions only in jump starts. Me too. Jumpies, if you will. That would make them cost less. Uh, yep. I would like that. Yep, and I like that too. Yep. Because if you're a baller or you like that artist because you read, you know, manga yeah. or whatever that they sure. that they draw for, uh, then you can get that one. Yeah. And uh, more options is more better, as we say in CCO Nation. Yeah, or you can get both. I like to say that too. Yeah, we do like that. Uh, who else do you like on this line? Anybody? Nobody on that line. Okay, screw next, that line. Next line, there is one that I want to touch on real quick. We talked about it on the pre-show is, yesterday. Is it Kellen Planer Trailblazer? That card can take a long walk off a short pier. That guy sucks. Man, he's kind of a thirst trap, hey? He's kind of a piece of shit. Is it me. Kaikar Zephyr Awakener? That guy is just shitty Kaikar. I am I am disappointed in that. I wish that it gave me birds. It gives spirits. Is It It must be Kiora the Rising Tide. No, that one can bite my ball sack too right? i like the art on that one it's fine i like that art oh it, it must be coma world eater coma world beater baby oh yes, yes. <laughs> now this is as i said on the pre-show fixed coma yes this is they looked at coma cosmo serpent and thought man this is this is this we is done way too fucked good. up guys <laughs> let's let's just print another coma that sort of does the same thing but isn't as good and see if anybody noticed let's print a coma that's like 85 percent as good yeah. and and we noticed wizards 
We know this. So you think this card's good? Nobody's going to come off of Coma to play this Coma. I'm this gonna, is a great card. This I'm going to give cool it a card. read. It's an 8-12 Serpent for blue, blue, green, green, three. That's seven, yes. right? An eight power, seven. Can't be countered. Trample, ward, four. <laughs> <laughs> when it deals combat damage to a player, oh, fuck off. create four, three, three, blue Serpent creature tokens named Coma's Coil. So hit with Coma, mech force neck. I like that it... I like that it gives you the same token. Yeah, it gives you the same token and yep. the same number of tokens that yep. you would have. Yep. But you got to like do things and the tokens don't let you remove your opponent's stuff from play kind yep. of or make her indestructible. So it's just not as good at the same mana value. And I... I Does this coma go in your coma deck? I'm going to put it in the Coma deck because it's a Coma card. Just for like completionism? Yeah. It, yeah. it doesn't, but I'm going to find one and I'm going to play it in my deck. I like how you can... I like how if somebody does manage to eliminate your commander from the game, to putting President in the moon to make it into a tree or something, right? Yeah. And then you're like, ah, uh, that's funny. Coma World Eater? I'll play Coma 2. <laughs> coma 2? You're, you're like still going to die? <laughs> Can't be freaking countered? <laughs> what game... Where was... I was playing my Wolfgar deck one time and I played a like Ulamog 1. And killed somebody's shit. And they were like, oh, no, Ulamog. And the whole team gathered together to, to kill Ulamog. And then I played the next turn, it came back around to me. Mm. And I played the new one that removed somebody's deck from the game. And it's like a 40 40 with Annihilator 100. And the one guy was like, oh, that's worse. That's way worse. <laughs> it's just the best. Next week, we got to remember to talk about the, the, extended art oh, yeah. treatments of of legends and cards because they they're all so cool they're so nice they're so they, very nice it yeah it's i hate i hate saying things like watsi pulled out all the stops on this one but the art's cool man uh, yeah cool, because cool. they they pull out all the stops and there's beautiful art on all the cards in every set yeah. like we're, we're blessed to be able to play the game that has all of the best fantasy artists in the world mm -hmm. doing all of the art for the game right yes but this set just happens to have a whole bunch that appeal to me. Yeah. And just just artistically. I think that that's cool. Let's do the... I've been noticing this lots on Twitter. I want to do it here on the show sure. with you. And we're going to talk about loot for one second. Yeah, I freaking hate this card. I don't care what the card does. That's not what's important. Loot. Is he a cute mascot or a creepy mascot? Hmm. Is he... Yes. A Care Bear or is he gritty? I can't think of a cute sports mascot. I'm sorry. I don't... So I had to use a Care Bear. Sure. Uh, he's kind of got those those eyes that are that are so... right. Like he's he. <laughs> oh no no! He looks psychotic. I'm, I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a Saskatchewan Rough Riders reference that I know that you're gonna get. Okay. Is he the old gainer the Gopher or is he the new <laughs> gainer the Gopher? <laughs> Rider oh, Nation's man. gonna know about what that yeah, is. Hopefully, Joe can find a picture and put him on. Yeah, if yeah. On the, YouTube, the old one was so cute, and then and he rode around in the back of that truck when they scored a touchdown. Yeah. And the new one is just like just gonna murder you in your sleep. Just coked out and insane. <laughs> it's man. Have you heard about cocaine? Yes, I have. The the wrestler. Yes. Oh. <laughs> cocaine. He and his finishing move is the coke slam. <laughs> oh man. Yes, I have. That's. Okay. I love it. Let's continue. Uh, uh, yeah, loot. I think he's creepy. Yeah, I think he's a creepy guy too. Let us know in the comments if you think loot, cute or creepy. I want to talk about these two in a row here. Near Div, Devious Diver. I knew you were going to like that one. I like it too um, for the reasons you're going to read on the card. Uh, Near Div, Devious Diver. I love the name. I love alliteration. This is uh, this is NDD, but that div at the end is like a stressed syllable. So it yep. sounds like it's a triple D. Dev Div. Yep. Okay, I like that one. And it's a Merfolk Rogue, both relevant creature types, 2-2 two, two for 3. When it becomes tapped, target player mills cards equal to its power. like that one. So you tap it and mill. It's great. And when you cast a spell from your graveyard or activate an ability of a card in your graveyard, draw a card and put a plus 1 on Near Div. Near Div. Near Div? Near Div. Near, I don't know. Near Div. And you know what? Dare I say, I like the art on this card. Me too. I like this one. It's a little cutesy, but I do like it, it. It is a little cutesy, but I like the color scheme. I like the greens and the oranges and the dark blues. Anyways, this card is cool. It goes alongside your... Uh, what's the guy from Crimson Vow that says instants and sorceries in your graveyard have flashback and spells can't be countered? 
Yes. That guy goes in this deck or this guy goes in that deck. Also, Either yes. or. And um, target player mills cards I, This is makes certain... me want to mill them so I can flash them back. I feel like this is a self-mill flashback deck. That's why I liked it. That's why I thought you were going to like it too. It's, like you, it's a yes. mill deck, but you're milling yourself. And as your deck does the thing, your deck is more equipped and better able to do its thing. And I yes. like stuff that it's not a here's how to do it card. It's a, hey, you guys want to do this? We're going to enable it for you. Card. Yes. And I like that. Hey, you guys want to do this thing, but traditionally you have to do it in green and black or mono black. Let's, let's put the mill word on it but and, and make it mono freaking blue yeah but you're doing it to yourself so i can traumatize myself because the target player yep and if i play the flashback deck or uh, i think i think that guy's name is lear sure lear, the the one from crimson vow or midnight hunt if that's in there and i can get it back or if that's what my commander is and i can just give the stuff in my graveyard flashback Maybe. And I pair it with things like Snapcaster Mage and and all of the deja vu effects that let me get instants and sorceries, just buy them back from my graveyard, just get them back. Yep. I think this is like a, a blue deck that kind of feels like a black deck. And uh, I don't know, I, I just, I like it. And there's things in blue that say when you cast from graveyard, draw a card. The do thing? Yeah, those are also from Innistrad and uh, have cool art. You could in some way combo with this and mill your whole library and yeah. like do the lab man thassa's oracle thing you could do that yep so lots of different little builds with this and great art relevant creature types if you want it in a merfolk or like a party deck because it's a rogue yep. yep and then we have niv miz at 25 yeah this i'm so sick of this fucking guy yes flying five five for six dragon no max hand size it's fine the, this card has no business being mythic if that's the end of it but yeah Whenever a source you control deals damage to an opponent, draw that many cards. Sure. What the hell? Earthquake for 10? I'm going to draw 30? Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. You Come on, you like that. I do? You like that. But I'll just Earthquake for 10 and win. Because Taralf. Fuck this guy. Man, we, we all banded together and we got them to kill Jace and made him make him look like a fucking asshole in the process. Yes. We need to band together... Niv's next. I'm so sick of seeing this motherfucker in every set. I'm tired of his ass. Get rid of him. Watsy, I want his head on a stick. We've given you lots of ideas for products over the years that you've used. The next card I want is Niv Mizzet on a stick. That's what I want. <laughs> and I want there to be some asshole comic working his mouth like a puppet. Well, he yes. talks about how it's oh, dark oh, in the box Nicol that he lives Nicol in. Nicol comes back. Yeah. Emrakul comes back. Yeah. Oh, I got this. Oh, sorry. Kay. I bumped the mic. I got this. Remember we were talking about the unban game the other day. Were unban Emrakul the Eons Torn. Yeah. In Commander. Ban Niv Mizzet. And then use all of the tentac Emrakul's tentacles to work frickin' Niv Mizzet like a marionette. Yeah. That would be some badass shit. That would also be good. Yes. Yeah. You got to give him a full frontal lobotomy first. We oh, I love how smart full he is. frontal. I'm so sick of this. God damn it. Move you know on what? To the next card. Your 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 theory of getting Jace. MTG canceled. Yeah. Bodes well for Niv Mizzet being canceled, but he very much is the face card in anything that he's involved in. Yeah. Any trip to Ravnica, you know Niv Mizzet's going to be there. Any dragon thing, you know Niv Mizzet's going to be there because mm -hmm. he's like the cool dragon that all the fantasy and dragon people love, right? <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about. Uh, you want uh, to? I know you want to talk about the starfish. I know you do. I just want to acknowledge the starfish riding a turtle. That's, that's all. I, that's all yeah. I want. I wish. I wish there was crabs in there somewhere. I want to play this in my crabs deck. Mm -hmm. I think I probably still will. Don't know if I will. <laughs> I might. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, probably will. Uh, I want to talk about Ozox, the clattering king. That okay? Does that just go infinite with a sack outlet? No. Kind of. It does. It uh, 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 it goes infinite with a sack outlet and a Lurin. But we just broke a Lurin. So. Yeah, oh man, we broke a Lurin. <laughs> Dang. When it dies, you get another skeleton. And when that skeleton dies, you get Ozox back into your hand. Yes. So if you can free cast Ozox. Like with a Lurin. With a Lurin. Uh, you could just, yeah. Yeah. But uh, it is mono black, so you can't play a Lurin in its deck. Yes. How do you do this? How do you make this guy mono black infinite? I'm I, sure there's a way to do it. I don't care. I'm sure there's a way. Uh, what's your next one? 
My next one is down one row, and it's right next to I think what is going to be your favorite one. Yes. This is my ac- this is, I actually am going to build her mm-hmm. if I can get one. I like Rev yeah. Tithe Extractor. You're going to build this? She's got like she's like a cool looking lady in the art. It's yeah. a three three for four. I've been wanting to build this deck for a long time, okay. and I think that this I think this is the card that's going to make me do it. And we're going to talk. I'm going to mention Tiny Bones right now because he goes in the deck with her. Yep. But read Rev first. She says, whenever we attack, target creature gains death touch until end of turn. Okay. We could give it to one of our opponent's creatures if we wanted to, but we won't. Whenever one or more creatures we control deal combat damage to a player, create a treasure token, then look at the top card of that player's library, exile it face down, we can play it, and mana, as long as it remains exiled. Sure. So it lets us draw cards off of our opponent's decks. This is literally black Regavan, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. But just so everybody's aware. <laughs> and what I want to do is I wanted to build the black deck that didn't have blue in it. I didn't want to have blue in it. I wanted a mono black deck that essentially draws cards off of my opponent's deck. Mm, mm-hmm. And I think this is the best I'm going to do. So. And Gaunty wasn't it for you? No. No, Gaunty, Gaunty is Gaunty. Gaunty no, has yeah. the... Gaunty has the Gaunty stigma, and I don't think this is going to have the same kind of distaste. You know it's I mean? only one card instead of Gaunty's, what, four? Yeah, yeah. And it, I, just, I think this is better. It's going to be over time, and it gives me mana to play them. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited for Rev, and I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to build her. I even picked out which deck I'm going to disassemble oh, to build her. Do you have a mono black deck? I have, yes, Hirobi. Oh, yes, that's right. And... Uh, Hirobi's not coming apart to build this? Absolutely not. What are you taking apart? I'm going to take apart my Gruel Stacks deck. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. I want to talk about the next two, and I think they're kind of the last, sort uh, of the last two. Yeah, I just want to... Yeah. Well, let's just do Tiny Bones sure. real fast, because yeah, yeah. I just wanted to mention him in Rev. Tiny Bones Bobble Burglar is a 1-3 for Black 1 Skeleton Rogue. Whenever an opponent discards a card, exile it from their graveyard with a stash counter on it. During our turn, we can play cards we don't own with stash counters on them from exile, and mana of any color can be spent to cast them, and you can pay four and tap him. Each opponent discards a card at yep. sorcery speed. So that is Rev, but instead of top of deck, it's from hand. Yes. Yeah, okay, so, so they go together. Th- so I'm going to draw cards from your deck, I'm going to draw cards from your hand, and then I'm not going to draw any cards from my deck. I'm going to have no cards that say draw card on them. Okay. Only from you. And that goes in the 99 of Rev. Correct. In I've, my Rev, yes. I've got a 99er here. Then I'll do the last two that I want to talk about for leaders. Okay. I've got Zul Asshurt Lich Lord. Oh, yeah. Yeah. See, I did a Brando there. Yeah, I, I like I that did, one. They did some Brando. Okay, so it's got Ward, pay two life. Two, two for two. So already good. Pretty Zombie good. Warlock, already good. Yep. It's it's both a uh, a bad guy. Yep. No, what's What's bad guy? Uh, outlaw. Outlaw. It's an outlaw and a zombie. Yep. War paid two life. And you can tap it to cast target zombie card from your graveyard this turn. Creature card. E- yeah, sure. Important. There are typo spells, uh, whatever they're called now. Are they? Are there Are there zombie ones? I, I don't think, think so. there are. I thought there was. Uh, there will be. There probably is. By yeah. the time this comes out, a new set will be spoiled, and there will be. Don't yeah, worry about for it. For sure. Yeah, yeah. So I can cast a zombie from my graveyard. Yes. The only thing that would have made this card better if it is, is if it said zombies you control get plus one, plus one. <laughs> oh. oh, be still, my aching heart. But this is good because it allows you to, um, I don't know, in your zombie deck, go Grey Merchant of Asphodel, yeah. Sacrifice, Tap Zul Ashurt, Grey Merchant of Asphodel, so you can like double your Garys. Yes. Yes. Very good. Yes. Gary, good. Very good. Yes. Gary, good. Yeah, we got to bring a we got to bring hey, a Grey Merchant of Asphodel for producer Gary. Yeah. Hey, he could hang it up in the in the studio. Get him a big card. Oh, I want a big gir- big card, Gary. Yeah, that'd be good. Big Gary. That'd be good. Which art would you get? I like the one we carry in the big sack. That's the one I like. Yeah. Yeah, I like that one. I, like I that love one. a big sack every yeah. now and then. Yeah. yeah. Okay. My last two. Which one? Which one do you want me to start with? Let's do, I like this one too. So let's do it last. Okay, okay. <laughs> Everything about this card is just I love it. This one also wins funniest art of the set by this, a lot. This one will be the winning cosplay in Las Vegas. Yes. <laughs> Shroomfus <laughs> Sprout Sire. <laughs> okay, Shroomfus Shroomfus Sprout Sire is a. Is a legendary creature sapperling. Our this, first one ever. It is the first legendary sapling. I was going to ask that. Yeah, a 1-1 one, one for green 2, so it's very attainable. 1-1 yep. one, one with trample, so you know this is going to be good. Yes. Fuck <laughs> like yeah. A 1-1 one, one with trample that doesn't even have a plus 1 ability. No. 
Okay, so this guy's a goof already. Doesn't get bigger on his own. Whenever a sapperling you control deals combat damage to a player, you know, because I'm going to have 10 of them and you don't have 10 blockers. That's right. I'm going to create another sapperling. <laughs> <laughs> so this, provided you have no blockers, is a token doubler in your command zone. Yes. This is cool. And all of the token doublers that we really care about are in mono green. Yep. All of the plus one doublers, because, you know, this guy has trample and maybe you'll do some plus one stuff. Maybe. Are in green. Do you mean to tell me Dude. that doubling season might be good with this guy? Yes. Ooh. It's a good thing they reprinted it in Foundations yes. to tell you exactly what to do. That's right. So that would be quadruple tokens for those keeping track at home. Dude. All of the, all of the um, uh, Second Harvest, uh, Parallel Evolution, Sapperling Burst, uh, Spontaneous Generation, uh, Sp- Sprout Swarm, all of those cards are in mono green. And sure, say what you want about Celestia tokens or or Naya Sapperlings with like Rith the Awakener or Jetmere I've done in the past. Both fit. of those. Both of those could take This is mono green goofy ass shit. Yeah. And you get like one of each different weird Sapperling art from over the years. Yeah. And you lay them all out and say, these are my goofy freaking guys. Yeah. Get Uncle Brando to draw one. Oh, yeah. Right? I like drawing sapperlings. They're fun. Because c- you can draw anything. And, yeah. and nobody would be like, no, it's not a sapperling. As long as it's sort of a plant, it's a sapperling. It's, you're using infinity tokens as long as it's green. <laughs> as yeah. As long as you draw a green squiggle. <laughs> this is a blade of grass that I've interpreted as a sapperling. Yep. Well, then you give them some arms with muscles and then a knife. I like to give mine knives. Yes, knife it up. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah. that's where the one power uh, comes from. Yes, with knife. green blood on it because chlorophyll because he cut himself to show you how tough he is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Shrufus. Man, I like that guy. He's I a, like his hat. I like his freaking legs. Like, Cause he's not Because mushrooms are not sapperlings. That means he's wearing a mushroom cap as a hat. He's got six legs and one arm. And a little and a little friend who's only got two legs and two arms. But, and he's using his one arm to hold his little friend's hand. Yep. What a great guy. What a good dude. He's walking that little guy across the street. What a nice little man he is. I like Did that you notice the other little guy riding his hat? Oh, no, I didn't. And now I have, and I'm excited about that. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to try and get one of these and run it in Tana the Butt Sewer, just to... I mean, typically when yeah. I attack with Sapperlings in that deck, that's usually the last time I attack, but maybe it won't be. And I'm, then I get uh, to play this card, which is I'm, fun. I'm saying it. I'm building this guy. Absolutely. All of that's those cool. all of those Sapperling cards that I had named from like uh, Masks yeah. block, Invasion block, Odyssey block, Onslaught block. Time Sparrow block. Got them all in foil, baby. <laughs> you know what some of those are worth in foil? More than they probably should be. Yeah, well, the spontaneous generation for Masks, yeah, not that much, but <laughs> but the rest of them. Okay, last card. Last one. Last card, and I think we both really like this card. We're both into this one because it's been a long time coming. Yeah. and I love a long time coming, (laughs) tell you that much. And they gave us something really good. It's Slinza the Spike Stampede. Ooh. Five, five for five. Uh, Like, can we just, can we we dwell on the alliteration for a minute? Slinza the Spike Stampede? Hell yeah, we can. Yes, we can. Okay, continue. Top line, I think, is my favorite part. Beast spells you cast cost two less. Two less, mind you. So good. Each other beast you control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter on it. I don't care. Whenever <laughs> Slinza or another creature with a power four or greater enters the battlefield, you may pay Gruel Hybrid and one. When you do, it fights a creature we don't control. Bro. So it's removal. It's pump. It's cost reduction. It's everything you want across one of the most ubiquitous creature types in the history of magic. Yeah. And that's so cool. You know what's so funny from, from a historical standpoint? Beasts have taken a hit in recent years. Like the like the currency on beasts has gone down. Well, that's because now they're splicing them up into other shit. Yes. Whereas before anything that had like a big like big teeth, beast. Tusks. Big, look muscly. Beast. Tusks, beast. If it wasn't an elephant, it was a beast, yes. right? And they didn't have the dinosaur creature type, except for Allosaurus Rider. Beast. Um Beast. Yeah. And lots of beasts from like Legion Onslaught Day because yeah. Beast was a creature type that Onslaught Block cared about. Yeah. Was Beast. But lots of those got errated now into Dinosaur, Bullshit. which is great for the dinosaurs. And their stock has gone up and there's dinosaur decks all over the place. Yeah. They can drive cars even in my, uh, in my imagination. <laughs> but Beasts have kind of gotten the big spiky stampede shaft over the last little while 
until now. Yes. And I go back to my, my question, French for question, yes. about uh, hybrid mana symbols in the text box of cards. And this one has it. And I think it's a great service for the beasts because so many of them are in red. Yes. Red and green are where they live. But I think green is primarily where you find them. That's probably why it's going to be in the beast pack in Jumpstart. Yes. And then it's got red in there so that once you acquire this, you can put it in the beast deck that you've always wanted to build. And while this is very prescriptive and it just tells you what to do with it, I think it's something that a lot of people have wanted to do for a long time. I, I think... I'm pumped that, that like you can finally kind of do it and have a dedicated thing yes. to help you do it. Yes to all of that. I will add that this card beats, it slaps. It's, it's the kind of card that gets the new Timmy player exciting. It's mm. a 5-5 five, five for 5 already good in jumpstart it makes my other beasts you know like in my jumpstart deck yep cost less or my commander deck which i'll get to in a second it makes my other beasts hit harder and it's got removal every step along the way it it does something that i already want to be doing and with this round of jumpstart more than i think any other round of jumpstart this round of jumpstart distinctly has i think the goal in mind for you to take your jumpstart deck after you've played and you say, you like, Magic says to you, you like Slinza? Mm-hmm. Go on to EDH Rec, go on to Scryfall or Gatherer, mm-hmm. go to FusionGamingOnline.com, you see seal holiday promo code, and build the Beast Commander deck. That's what this jumpstart is for. Yes. It's to get you in the door and play simple, core set, fun Magic but also take the legend that we gave you and build a deck around it, Mr. New Player, because they're all good and they all have decks that could be built around them. This is one of those times where people say either excitedly or not excitedly, oh, all magic is commander now. Well, now they've put it into Jumpstart where it probably belonged the whole time. Oh, <laughs> so this is great. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay, so when you play any jumpies throughout the history of Jumpstart, you could say... Hey, that was fun. I want to build a deck around this. Mm -hmm. Now they're giving you a tool to specifically do that. They're giving you the Beast Commander. They're giving you the Sapperling Commander. They're giving you the Merfolk or the Mill Commander or the Treasure Commander or the Cowards and and Bullies, Cowards and Warriors Commander. They're giving you the tool to do it. There's a zombie one, a goblin one. There's there's all sorts of them. There's a stupid one. There's a bird one. There's a snake one. Well, I guess the snake one isn't in Jumpstart, and neither is the stupid one. Yeah, but they're still in Foundations. Yes, they're still there. Which, if 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 you and your parent, or if you're a parent, you buy this stuff for your kid, and you want to, like increase their awareness about magic. Maybe you buy a booster box of Jumpstart and a booster box of Foundations and you spend 200 bucks or you save 5% using CCO Holiday promo code because it's Christmas coming up. That's right. And you say, here's the Jumpstart packs. Let's learn and familiarize ourselves with magic. Mm -hmm. And then let's open up this Foundations booster box and make commander decks out of Jumpstart plus booster box. And now I've got two or three or maybe even four commander decks. Sick. And I've spent $200, which is probably less than a set of four pre-cons of the next set are going to cost. That's Probably, yeah. right? Are the decks going to be as good? No. But when you're learning, and especially if you're playing with kids, do you care? Yeah. No. They, don't, they certainly don't. And it goes back to this is the building blocks. And what I think we'll, we'll talk about next week the the new floor of commander just like you said that yeah. foundations will be the floor of standards power level yep. i think after reviewing the legends again and looking at the set closer it'll be the new floor of of commander and you can take the optimists or the pessimists kind of viewpoint from that like the god of seven eldrazi seven sire guy yeah it's like oh my god if that's the floor holy fuck we're we're in for it yeah but when you look at like near div devious diver it's like what oh man fuck? if that's the floor we could do we could do self mill opponent mill i could do lab maniac i could do all kinds of stuff with that right loot or beast or coma like there's so many different build paths mm-hmm. i i actually the more i look at it the more i like this this set. is one of those sets the more you kind of just sit with it for a while it it gets better and better each time and i i like that about it it's, it's almost not... like a team of watsy gaming experts who have dozens and 
dozens and probably combined whole team over hundreds of years of experience in game design mm-hmm. know what they're doing. That's it. They sat down and just did the did the right thing. This is my final thought of the day, Uncle Brando. It was a very good thought. Final thought of the day. And you know when we're going to do another final thought of the day? Uh, on the next episode of Commander Cookout Podcast. Hit our theme song!